Well, uh, we're joined here by Lancelot and Arthur. I think that's right. Uh, Lancelot. Okay. This is Lancelot. Lancelot and Arthur. These are Angora goats, and this is the source of, of uh, mohair. And that is important in the context of Capitol Hill for only one reason, and it's a surprising one to many of our constituents, I'm sure. Uh, each and every year, as we're trying to figure out our national defense, trying to figure out funds for mass transit, trying to find a few dollars to reduce the growing ma uh, a mountain of debt that we have in this country. We're also writing about a million dollars worth of checks to farmers who, uh, who raise mohair, uh, who raise mohair. And that comes from a historic anomaly from the days when we made our military uniforms out of wool and it was decided that uh, it was a uh, product of national significance and we had to make sure that farmers were well, that was a long time ago, and there's no longer any rationale that either Jason and I have been able to conceive of for why we should continue uh, this subsidy. Whether you like goats or whether you like wool or not is not the issue. I happen to have grown quite fond of these two particular goats, and I am worn, I wear wool from time to time. But this is a question about what types of programs we should be subsidizing here in Washington, and uh, so Jason and I are working to end the mohair subsidy and I want to thank uh, Jason for, for being here. I, I offered an amendment in 2001 and was successful in ending it for only a year and it quickly came back. But Jason, when he got to Congress, immediately started his work on trying to reduce un unnecessary and wasteful programs and wanted to introduce them now. The, the, uh, you know, there, was a, there was a real need back in the 1940s for the production of mohair and uh, I can understand why our government was subsidizing. The problem is we haven't used mohair in a military uniform since the Korean War. And so this, uh, the subsidy continues and the expense continues. And that's, that's the problem in Washington, D.C. The problem in Washington, D.C. is programs start with good intentions, but they never end. And so we have to be able to cut things at some point. And if we can't cut this, what are we going to cut? Well, we have to make some difficult decisions. We're $13 trillion in debt. We're paying $660 million a day just in interest. And as much as we love these goats and the people that produce them, we can't be all things to all people. And uh, this is symbolic of literally hundreds if not thousands of programs that are started by the federal government that just never end. And uh, people would argue that, oh, a million dollars isn't a lot of money. That's what you hear in Washington, D.C. But it's the people's money. And we shouldn't be taking it from somebody else's pocket and putting it in somebody else's. And so we have to work not only on the tariff side of this issue, but also on the subsidy, and, and there are many other programs like that. So, and we're going to do it in a bipartisan way. You know, there's a lot of discussion about, you know, are we on different sides of the aisle? I think we can be very united in finding wasteful spending and, and getting rid of it. So. I think Jason right, and I want to thank him for giving me the chance to say this is a true fleecing of America. That uh, when you have funds going for something like wool, uh, all these years later, it's clearly something that can be removed. Now, here's what our strategy is going to be. Congressman uh, uh, um, Chaffetz has introduced freestanding legislation. We're also going to use the opportunity that's presented each year in the Agriculture Appropriation Bill. And we're going to come to the floor and ask our colleagues uh, whether they believe this should be continued. And hopefully, the Appropriations Committee will do our job for us. And they'll see that this is something that can easily be removed. This is not the only program uh, that falls into this category, and Jason and I are both doing work to try to find others, but this is a fairly obvious one. And um, for those of you who are wondering how I became so skillful at driving two Angoras at once, it's all about the left horn. That's apparently the reverse gear, is the left one, and the forward is the right one. Is that right? <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, the way, one other thing I mentioned is, this is uh, the Republicans have a couple of programs. One's called UCUT. Uh, this is part of that UCUT program. I'm the uh, co-chair with uh, uh, Tom Brady uh, on what's called the Sunset Commission, uh, Caucus that we have within the Republican Study Committee. And then AmericaSpeakingOut.com is also some. So we're just trying to draw as much attention to it as we can. And we're going to have to make some tough choices uh, because we got a financial crisis on our hands. and. Uh, seems like a good place so all right any questions you guys sort of make this sound like a no-brainer so what are the entrenched mohair interests that are sort of standing in the way or, or are there I mean what well here's what we learned we learned that there is a uh, there's an alliance that gets formed between one agriculture program and another 
that, you know, someone who might have no interest in mohair but has interest in cotton or has interest in apples will say, you know what, we got to be careful and stand up for the Angora program, ours could be next. And something else happens. You know, to some degree, one of the reasons that we brought these goats here to call attention to this is because very often obscure programs stay obscure unless someone does a job to go in and really look hard at it and try to root it out. So it's a combination of status quoism and also the alliances that get formed in Congress. And sometimes it's for good reasons. Look, I, I vote for agriculture bills because if I want my rural colleagues to support housing programs and mass transit programs, I want to be there for their agriculture programs. But if there's a bad housing program or a bad agriculture program, I would hope that we'd all vote to end them. Things start with good intentions, but they never end. We, we don't do a very good job in Congress of killing things. It just doesn't happen. And so you got to draw we're a lot of attention to it. We're not trying to kill. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> the animals get skittish. When you find them. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to slaughter these brokers. <laughs> <laughs> just going to shear them a little. Just going to shear them a little. We just need a haircut in Congress. How's that? Uh. Just a haircut. These are hair machines right here. Um, but we've we got to figure out how to, how to dismantle them. I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going to look like the wrong height, too, I tell you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had either of you ever seen a mohair goat before? Or, I mean, you grew up in the city, country. Um, you don't see many use in this <laughs> Is this your first run-in? <laughs> I have not been this close to this. Yeah, no, no. This is, uh, look, they, they're beautiful animals. Uh, the mohair clothing, you know, fetches a very fine price. But, again, it's just some, not something that should be subsidized by an American tax it, it, the answer is no, and but to some degree, this is a fairly common sense thing here. Uh, what? You don't need. Yeah, exactly. oh. um, this is look. I generally walking in the streets of Brooklyn and Queens don't encounter a lot of four-legged animals with horns, um, and so this is an unusual afternoon for me. That that is for sure. But uh, uh, it, it also though, it's also evidence of something else is that is that you know Jason and I don't agree on a lot of issues. But there are some things that are simply indefensible in the budget, and I think that there are we are going to have big disagreements about how it is that we get the deficit and debt down. But I think there are programs that the American people should know we can take care of if only we shake out, shake the tree a little bit here. Mark. If, if we can't cut the small stuff, we'll never get to the big ones that, that are really going to make huge huge differences. So we've got to figure out this equation. I, I, you said that there's sort of you know like tag team work going on in among agricultural interests, which I would assume would be on the Appropriations Committee as well. I mean, is that, what are your chances then of, of, of them, you know, in your words, doing the right thing and ending this themselves? Well, this, this program has survived, as Jason said, for the better part of a generation. Um, the one time we were able to successfully beat it back, we had to do it on the floor. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful that, that we're in a new environment now where people are really looking for, for ways to cut. And we're hoping once, once you know, this is not the only time we are going to be taking Lancelot and Arthur to the floor with us every day until this program gets cut. As a matter of fact, I'm refusing to wear wool until my colleagues finally get to vote on it. I'm not taking that same plan. <laughs> this place moves way too slow. Anything else? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Send all the PETA email to shape it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Nice work. Well done. That's some quality uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Alright guys. Thank you so much. All we need now is two kids. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs>